Hello, my name is Carmen Nkotra and I'm excited to be here today with researcher, author and clinician, Dr. Sue Johnson. Dr. Johnson is known around the world for her significant contributions to research in attachment science, emotion and couples therapy. She's the developer of emotionally focused therapy for couples known as EFT and more recently emotionally focused individual therapy known as EFIT. She's highly regarded, highly awarded for her research, her books and training programs, and for her contributions to the field of psychotherapy. Sue, welcome, and thank you for joining me today. You're most, most welcome. So we're here to talk about attachment science and why it's so important in therapy. Why do, why do therapists need to know about this? Um, well, I think um, it's such a good question, and you need to ask, in particularly why therapists who are dealing with trauma need to know about attachment science. I think that's a really key focus. And I think that's a fantastic focus for your summit. You know, um, I mean, the big general answer is that um, that attachment science is the best developmental theory of the development of personality that we've ever come up with. And that it basically tells us who we are. And if you if you better understand who we are, then as a therapist, you can tune into who we are. You can work better with who we are. So that's the big general, um, you know, reply. But if we if we get a bit clearer about that, um, I think the bottom line is that we focusing on attachment and trauma takes trauma outside just what happens inside your own skin and puts it into the context of social relationships where we we're bonding social human beings and our trauma has a lot to do with our relationships whether we um ex how much we experience threat has a lot to do with our relationships whether we can heal from trauma has a lot to do with our relationships so um attachment science puts trauma and puts our human emotional disorders in a relationship context. And we know very well, there's tons of research on the fact that loving connection, even with just one other person, seems to protect you from the, uh, the worst effects of trauma. It affects how you perceive and deal with threat, bottom line. We did a study years ago which was um, looking at uh, people in an MRI machine. And um, what we found was that uh, women in an MRI machine, when they felt insecure with their partner, they were distressed, they didn't trust them. When they were threatened with having a shock on their feet, whether they were in the machine alone or with a, str or a stranger holding their hand or their partner holding their hand, when they had the, the threat of this shock happening, their brains went berserk. And then what we found was after we helped them with bonding conversations, and they felt close and connected to their partner. And we put them back in the machine after, after emotionally focused therapy, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and we, 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 we take their, their conversations. After bonding interactions, we put them back in the machine and the women would get this threat. They were gonna be shocked. And if they were alone or with a partner, a stranger holding their hand, their brains went berserk. When their partner held their hands, their brains stayed completely calm. And if you asked them if the shock hurt, they said when they did receive it, if they did receive it, they said, no, it was just a bit uncomfortable. So this is, um, this is who we are as human beings. Our nervous system, the natural way to calm someone's nervous system is to have another human being come in and be with them emotionally present and connected right so you know, i think this matters we know that the best way to resilience from in the face of trauma is is emotional connection with another human being and of course when you have that you it helps you feel emotionally connected with yourself belonging leads to becoming we know that from all our research you know, the it really is true that love grows people. It sounds like a cliche. It just happens to be a scientific fact. <laughs> so, you know, and, and developmental psychology in terms of attachment tells you that very clearly. Um, the best way that you can you can help children grow up strong and resilient 
is to parent them well and to and when you do that you show them that vulnerability is manageable so we know how important relationships are in trauma in terms of healing and i think this says something about how we show up for our clients as therapists but we also know that emotional isolation insecure attachment is iatrogenic in itself it's it creates all kinds of problems not just not being able to deal with trauma and rebound from it it creates all kinds of problems it's associated with every mental health disorder emotional disorder known to man if you listen to people who are depressed anxious particularly with ptsd they'll always tell you that they feel alone they'll always tell you that they don't belong to the human race that there's somehow something wrong with them that they hide from others they don't know how to take in any support they get they are alone in their suffering and my understanding of that from attachment science is that your nervous system is not designed for that your nervous system you're a social bonding animal your nervous system knows that in isolation uh vulnerability really has no solution so you know but we in our society we love our rambos you know we love our superheroes that's great um only unfortunately sometimes i think we take them seriously <laughs> we actually believe you know that that we can be that way and so we know about the the cost the cost isolation is a key feature of trauma it always has been so you know then you think okay so for trauma and for looking at serious emotional disorders attachment science is key it helps you understand them it helps you empathize with them and tune to them it helps you understand where people are coming from um help them tolerate what's happening to them normalize what's happening to them it helps you heal them it gives you a map to their emotions their longings their deep fears it, and you know if emotions have a structure relationships have a structure um they're not just random there's set patterns in them and if we understand these patterns which attachment helps us do then we can be on target with our interventions we can go to what really matters we can create change and so, so that reminds me i've heard you talk about emotion as a core organizing principle in yes. science um can you talk a bit more about that organizing principle in relation to attachment and trauma and and why that is important to understand that's a very very good point um i mean post traumatic stress disorder is an emotional disorder that's what it is the key the heart of ptsd is um not being able to regulate your emotions being hijacked by amazingly difficult emotions that make no sense to you that you can't deal with that are frightening um unacceptable alien um that is the core of PTSD so from our point of view and that's what attachment says that's what Carl Rogers told us really um and you know we sort of give a nod to that in most of our mental health approaches we teach people skills to regulate them and we um you know and we we and who's to say that doesn't help some people of course it does but what we do is we in emotionally focused therapy in efit emotionally focused individual therapy what we do is we go in and we just go for the emotion we track it we hold it we regulate it with the client and then we restructure it and so um what we believe is it does more than just help people cope it helps people grow it helps people grow into thriving uh you know and our research says that that we've done over the last 30 35 years with couples but also looking at how partners change in in couple therapy right so um you know we we have pretty substantial evidence about the power of focusing on emotion but also emotion theorists talk a lot about how emotion is so powerful um from my point of view it's not the least bit irrational i don't know who decided that it what it is is fast 
It's designed to save your life. You know, if you sat there when the bus is coming towards you at 50 miles an hour and thought, now, is this bus going to hit me or is it not? You, We'd all be dead, okay? We, we wouldn't have evolved. But we don't. We leap. And But unfortunately, emotion is so powerful, it can also be, you know, overwhelming and it can unbalance us. So what we do in therapy is help people get their balance and turn towards emotion. Mm. And, and it starts to shift. You know, a good example is my client who comes in and has about five diagnoses and um you know the main one being chronic depression when we really go into those into that depression which is mostly about avoiding emotion it's about numbing um when we really go into that she comes up with a new way of seeing it and feeling it in her body and that that way is she says i'm heartbroken yes that's right yeah. You're heartbroken. And when she says I'm heartbroken, um, she knows what to do with that. And so do I. What you do when you're heartbroken is you grieve. And so she starts to grieve and come through the emotion. So, you know, I could talk a lot about all the the ways of, of seeing emotion. The bottom line is that emotion is a powerful, powerful, compelling, fast organizer of our inner experience and the signals we send to others, our relationships. So, um, and certainly for people like Bowlby, the father of attachment science, and for therapists like Rogers, they never met. It's a shame. They would have loved yes, each other. Um, but for people like them, they're very clear about the primary role of emotion and how emotion has to have a primary role in healing rather than sort of being put on the side and it's it's seen as a problem and it's something you just have to manage better you know that's that only takes you so far um i think to deal with trauma we have to do more than that we do have to help people you know it's great to teach people to exercise and do yoga and to notice their thoughts when they're triggered and to you know, practice skills, that's great. My question is, is it enough? And from our research, I don't think it's enough. So uh, I think your topic is incredibly important, incredibly, you know, uh, looking at attachment and trauma, looking at trauma in the context of who we are as human beings, as, who we are as social bonding beings, yes. is, is we need to get there. Hey. You're a real pioneer here, Carmen. You're uh, you're uh, you're doing something that is incredibly, incredibly important for our our understanding of ourselves and our mental health field. I'm really appreciative of you saying that, and of you being involved in this. And I and I, I guess I can speak for myself as a therapist. In my early therapy work, you know, we were taught to teach clients a lot of skills, particularly communication skills. And that always seemed to hit a wall um, in terms <laughs> of people being connected because it was so cognitive and it was about the person with the skills just getting what they wanted rather than actually really connecting with another person. You know, the issue is um, relationships are all about reading people's faces and tuning in. Emotional signals are incredibly powerful. You pick them up instantly, okay, just instantly. Your, your whole body responds to them. You know, that's why emotion can be contagious. But, you know, what I always thought was skills are terribly useful. You just can't use them when you really need them, which is when you're flooded with emotion. This is the trouble. You know, I would watch these couples who'd been taught all these skills, um, you know, and they could go through the motions. They could do them. <laughs> But when they were in the middle of shutting each other out or uh, trying to control and destroy each other, the skills were irrelevant. You know, they were they were on the side. Whereas what we know is when we watch these bonding conversations between couples or when we watch someone in EFIT starting to really securely with balance connect with their deep inner part of self, often the one that was traumatized and found vulnerability impossible to deal with. When we watch that, that's not 
going through the motions, that's deep growth. That's what Bowlby was talking about, the head of the father of attachment theory, when he talked about, you know, how people grow each other naturally. That's a natural growth process. People, people grow each other, you know, um, all through the centuries. We've held people who are grieving. Is that just because we're sentimental or because we've seen it in a movie? No, <laughs> that's that's because our nervous system is biologically prepared to respond to that. We know that that belonging is, is a comfort and it's more than a comfort. It tells us you still matter. We see you. You belong. You're important to us. It tells us so much that when we've lost something that's so valuable that we can never replace, we desperately need that message. Mm -hmm. So it's, for me, attachment tells us the kind of natural way that we can do therapy. We can be on target and we can do therapy in a way that fits with the way our nervous system is, is structured. So it's, it's powerful and it, I believe it because I, not only because the theory is amazing and there's all this research on attachment, but I believe it because it never lets me down in therapy. I believe it because we tape our clients in all these studies and in clinical research and in supervision, and you can see it on a tape. In fact, the primer that we just did last year on, on emotionally focused individual therapy, I put all these transcripts in, you know, and my editor said, do you think this is a good idea you know, to put these transcripts in? And I said, probably not, but I'm trying to show people these things that we see that are so powerful. You know, people go through these, these um, if you, what do you call them? Corrective experiences, emotional epiphanies, and they come out different because they have a new connection with themselves. Right? I was so excited when when EFIT emerged out of EFT because it seemed like such a natural progression. I was too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was too. And then some part of me said, are you insane? Like, you you know, you're, you, you, you're known as a couples therapist. This is enough already. Like, what do you want to walk into this whole new thing? And then I thought, it's not new. It's the same skills. It's the same perspective. Yes. It doesn't matter who you have in the room. You you never have an individual in the room. The individual brings in all the relationships that are in their head, all the key people that they've interacted with, where they've decided who they are. You know, I take my English mother everywhere. Um, I you know I mean, um, and that's not a good idea actually with me because you know she. I'll do a new book and I'll think, oh my goodness, look at that! I did that, and somehow. My English mother says, don't you get a swelled head now. Uh, Who do you think you are? That book is unimportant. Nobody cares about it. You're like, and unfortunately, but now I know how to talk back and say, that's enough, mum. You know, I don't need to believe that anymore. You know, um, when I grew up for a young girl, a young English working class girl, to start to believe that she had something important to say was probably pretty dangerous, you know? And so, uh, so, so that's what she taught me, you know, but we, we carry around these folks in our heads. I have my husband, my sweet husband in my head, and he always manages to say very intelligent, <laughs> balanced things, which, you know, I'm not always the most balanced person. So, you know, I'm rather intense. So, um, so that's good, but we bring these relationships into individual therapy with us. Yeah, and you're, what you're saying is that we, we are living all the time in relationship. We're never actually really living as a true individual separate from, from others. Thank you. That's brilliant. That's a, that's a brilliant way of saying it. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly right. We're, I should remember that. We're living all the time in relationships. That's right. We're not some little separate thing that's inside this skin you know we're right that's right so i think your conference is incredibly important thank you sue we think so too and we are absolutely delighted that you're going to join us for it um it really gives it some uh some oomph <laughs> in terms of oh okay well, yeah, I'm, good. <laughs> well, I'm good at oomph 
I, I sometimes I can be mistaken at other things, but oomph, oomph, I, I can manage. Yeah, okay, I, can, I, I can manage yeah. oomph. Okay. Nice to talk to you, Carmen. Lovely. You too, Sue. Look forward to seeing you on the 30th of May. Okay.